Welcome to Revolutionary Gazette. I'm Will. Well, we're back at Colonial Plantation outside of Philadelphia, and we say thanks to the team here and to Alfam for making this possible. When you go to historic sites, often you interact with interpreters who are on staff. Today, we get a chance to look at history another way. We're going to talk with a dedicated volunteer. Bob, what are we going to talk about today? Uh, we're going to talk about the, the dying process, uh, basically dying from, from the garden to uh, what you're going to be wearing. Well, we met Eva last time when we talked about the dye garden. Talk to me and just remind us why dye out of the garden. Of course. If you were going to be a professional dyer, uh, you would most likely have had a dye garden, but you'd also be using store-bought dyes that would have to be imported. Things like your cochineal and your indigo. Um, an 18th century yeoman living on a plantation wouldn't have been able to afford that. Or if he did, he could have you know, used that money elsewhere. So we would be dying from our garden. We might have a couple particular plants that we're growing just for dying. But we also could have been dying from the wilderness, which is basically still the garden. But today we're dying something that we have grown in our garden. What is this? This is weld. Well, it starts as a plant, but yes. I see it chopped up here. Yeah, Talk we, to me about how we get from the garden to here. Well, we harvest this this morning, and they, they come in long, long stalks. Um, that we chop it up into little pieces. What Basically, made what made you decide today was the right time to harvest this? Um, just the you want to get it right before it goes to uh, the seed, and you just have like the little blossoms on the end, and it that adds to your your color. Great. Well, we've got more than the weld here. Talk me through what we're seeing. I see okay. wool. All right, we have some wool right now simmering in a pot of water. And in that water, we have what's called a mordant. A mordant you add to your, your, your fabric to make your colors color fast. And that's a, what type of mordant is this that? This is alum. Um, this is something that is in our area, uh, but most likely they would have been um, purchasing it from an apothecary in Chester or Upland, which would be the big cities in our area. Could you die without the mordant? You could die without the mordant. There's several dyes that don't require one, but our particular dye that we have today does require a mordant because what would happen is over time, as you wash your, your clothing, it will start to fade. So you want to put the mordant in there to keep those colors the same as when you dyed them. So there's mordant already in here? Yes, yes. Yeah, it's been in the uh, the water steeping for about an hour now. And how hot is this water? Oh, probably about a little bit, a little bit hotter than the body temperature. Um, you don't want to get it too hot because if you get it too hot, uh, the boiling will felt your your wool. Okay, so we've got this with this. So we've got the mordant and the wool here. I see the wool's already spun into yarn. Is it necessary to go there, or what condition can, can we die in? You can do. Um, a fleece, which is basically when you take it off the, the sheep, you can you can do it that way. If you want to spin dye wool, you can do it this way. Uh, we could turn that into a scarf, maybe mittens or something like that, and we could dye them then. So it doesn't really matter what step. Sometimes if you dye it like this, it's a little bit more maybe cost effective than if you're dyeing a piece of fabric because you're going to be dyeing pieces of fabric that you will be cutting off. Okay. Well. What color do we get from the weld? Oh, we're going to get a nice yellow color. So, Bob, the wool's in the mordant. Talk me through the dye right. process. Once we bring our water to a boil, we're going to put our dye in, our, our weld. Let it boil for about an hour. While it's boiling, it's basically extracting all the color out of our plant. Once we have it on there for about an hour, we'll take the pot off the fire, remove the, the, the plant material, the dye from it. Then at that point, we can put our uh, wool into the dye pot and, and let that sit for about an hour or so. Okay, so it takes a couple hours here. Yes, then what yes. happens after the wool sat in the pot for an hour? Um, we'll take the wool out of the pot and we have to rinse it out. Great, what happens if I don't leave the wool in for a full hour? Your color may not be as rich as you want it. Okay, and is that a choice a dyer can make to make different shades? Yes, yes. You have you might have some dye plants that weren't up to snuff. Um, so if you're trying to match something with that, you figure, well, okay, you know in the past that this leaving it in for an hour gets it at this color level. Well, you're down here. So you want to, you know, take it out a little bit quicker before it gets to that, that point. 
on the Revolutionary War era farm, whose job is the dye work? It most likely would have been uh, the lady of the house to, to do it, um, was being, you know, being by the fire without sounding too, you know, sexist, it would have been her job in the kitchen. And, you know, it might have been the, the husband's job to, you know, start the fire and all that. But if you had children, that would have been their job. Um, because this would have been taking place, you know, during the day, farmer, he has things to do. He just can't, you know, say, oh, I'm not going to pl play out the field today. I'm not going to take care of the animals. So the labor is divided up to make sure everything gets yes. done. Everybody's yes. helping. If it's a professional dye person, is that, do we think that's male or female? I most likely would have been male. Just as a, the 18th century hierarchy of uh, uh, guild of professions, they were usually always men. Um, you do see some females in the occupation, but they usually take care of their, their husband after he dies. Well, Bob, we've stewed an hour. Let's go ahead. What's next? All right, we're going to strain our material, our plant material, out of our dye pot. And I'm going to have you hold this up. Okay. And I'm going to pour our dye into the pot. And we're going to collect it in this tin, tin container here. And we're going to be careful that we don't pour it on me. And you're going to use a piece of leather to keep safe, yes, too. Yes, yes, yes. It's been off the boil for a while, but it's still a little bit warm. There we go. That is a very interesting, almost salad-like smell. Yes. And like I see my fingers are already taking a little bit of yellow. There you go. Put that there. Put that off the fire. All right, I'm going to put this back over the heat, but not hot enough to bring it to a boil. So I'm going to put it up a little bit higher. Okay, let me uh, wash my hands so I don't get no soot on the uh, stuff. Well, we've seen all sorts of stuff going on at the process Bob talked to us about. We've waited an hour with the wool in. What's next, Bob? All right, next, basically we're, we're finishing up. We're gonna take the wool out, put it into uh, cool water to uh, basically clean it up to make sure that we don't have any alum left on it and there's no dye you know, from, the, from the plants left on it. Okay, so let's see. Everything's now super simple. But it's still a little bit warm. All right, I think that's all we got. Here you go. All right. But yellow is stunning. How long do we soak it in here? Do we just rinse it? What's well, the process just, here? We just rinse it um, and we're pretty much done. That is beautiful. And that is dye out of the garden. Yes, yes. Fantastic. And this is weld and weld. the color here. So now what? Hang it, let it dry? You let it dry. Then you could uh, process it in any way you want. If you want to knit it or you're going to be putting this on your loom. Well, Bob, thanks so much for sharing this with us. It's great to be across the country with dedicated volunteers and staff members. In this case, we found a connection to history through the wool from the sheep out in the barn, the weld out of the garden and the dye pot. We'll see you next time.